This is part two of my frequently asked questions. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Craig Michaud and I am the electrical instructor. Today we're going to go over some frequently asked questions. So there's two things I want to cover today and um, I keep getting this, uh, these questions quite a bit. So I want to clarify. Um, in the videos, I know I've gone over a few things and you know, I know people have asked different questions, but you know, one of the, one of the questions that kind of sticks in my head right now is uh, sizing largest motor for the standard calculation when, doing sur uh, when sizing a service. Well, there's a couple different methods you can use and I think some people are getting screwed up with some terminology, so we're gonna kick back and we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Also, I've been asked how to, how, what chart do we use to size the grounding conductor for a service? So we're gonna go over that also. So let's get started. Okay, so the first part of the question is you know, sizing the largest motor. Well, we have to kind of go back and think about sizing a standard calculation. Well, in the standard calculation, we're gonna go through, and if you watch my videos above, you'll see that we size the general lighting load, and then we size fixed appliance. Well, in the fixed appliance, that's where we're gonna most likely find our largest motor. Unless we have air conditioning and heating, if air conditioning becomes larger, Obviously, we're gonna, we will use that as a largest motor, but still, the whole point of what we're talking about today is just sizing the largest motor, which if you watch the calculations, it, it'll be line 14. Um, and basically what we're talking about is the, how do we come up with that percentage? So this is what we're gonna do. I have on the board here, I have a hot water heater, a dishwasher, a disposal, and a trash compactor, okay? I have the wattages for these. We are going to go through, and when we're sizing fixed appliances, what do we do? We add them together. So as you can see on the board here, when we add these together, we get 8,375. Well, when we're sizing them, we're taking them at 100%. Okay? I'm doing the calculation, I'm doing my Ohm's Law, and I'm sizing them at 100%. I think what people are getting confused with is they're not following 430.24. Here's how this all works, and this is what we have to remember, especially as an electrician, new apprentice, you know, anybody, you have to remember this. When we size a motor, we size the largest motor at 125%. 125%. Every motor after that, we size it at 100%. Okay? So with that being said, when I size this out, every one of these motors, and we're going to talk about the trash compactor and the disposal because out of these, these are my two possible largest motors, which means my trash compactor becomes my largest motor. So what we're going to do is we're taking these at 100% of their full load current. In the calculation of the fixed appliances, line 10, we're gonna multiply that by 75% because we have more than four devices, or excuse me, more fixed appliances connected. And what that's doing is we're taking all of that at 100%, but then the demand of fixed appliances is being taken at 75%. I know it's confusing. I'm working on some workbooks and stuff, so maybe you guys can you know, see the difference between the two. Eventually, guys, I'll be getting to that, so you know, keep an eye out for that. But what I'm really trying to stress to you guys is sizing the largest motor for a uh, standard calculation, you're sizing all of this at 100%. We then have to find the 25% for the largest motor. Okay, so now sizing that motor, we've already discussed the 100%. Now we're gonna discuss the 25% because what we're doing, we are sizing, and this is a question that's asked a number of times. Why is it only 25%? Shouldn't it be 125%? You are correct, but in the standard part of the calculation, when we size the fixed appliances, we already calculated 100%. Now we need to find the largest motor and add 25% more to that one motor. Not all the motors, just one motor. 
if I was to take this and, and, and the, what we had before, the trash compactor is my largest motor, at 1,275 watts, I've already taken that at 100% in the fixed appliances. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to multiply this by 25%. What I get out of this is 318.75. This is now 25% of that. So if I was to take this at 100% and add it together, this would actually be 1275 plus the three, which would give me my 125%. And then you would have your 100% that's already in your fixed appliances already taken care of. It's not as confusing as it seems. It's actually broken down pretty simple. Like I said, if you haven't watched the videos, um, I do explain this. I'm hoping in this video here, I can explain it a little bit more so it makes sense. If this does make sense, please give me a thumbs up. I really need to know this is gonna work for you guys. You know, sometimes what we have to do is we have to break this stuff down in the layman's terms and really think about it. Remember, 43024 states that we have to take the largest motor at 125% and then add every other motor connected to the load at 100%. We're doing the same thing, but when we size largest motor in the standard calculation, we are taking 25% of the largest motor and adding that to it. So we've already done the 100% stuff. We're just trying to find that one motor and get 25% from that one motor and put it into the calculation. Really hoping that makes sense. Next question that I always get to is sizing the service grounding conductor using Article 250. Let's talk about that one. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about grounding. One of the questions that I always get is, how do we size the equipment grounding conductor for a service when we have two charts that are the same, which one do we use? Well, here's the thing. There is a trick and a method to the madness, okay? When you go through the calculation, you size it all out, whether it be your standard calculation or your optional calculation, you're going to come up with having to find that grounding conductor. Okay? And that grounding conductor is going to be pretty close to the same. You find it the same way in the standard and in the optional calculation, which, keep your eye out, we'll be doing a video on sizing a service, conductors, neutral, and grounding. But this is one of the questions that keep being emailed to me. I need to know what size grounding conductor I need to run for this service. How do I size it? There's two questions you need to know. Are you sizing the ground off of your main breaker? Or are you sizing your conductor off of your ungrounded conductors? So here's the thing. If you open up the code book and you look at these two charts, Article 250, six, uh, Article 250, 66, and Article 250, 122, they both have the same information, but you have to use something different. So I'm gonna put this down for you guys and hopefully you can write a little note in your code book so that you'll know when you're sizing this, which one to go. This is one of my questions that I get, especially on exam prep courses. You know, everybody's asking, I'm not sure what chart to use. Well, this, I'm gonna tell you now how you can find it by using certain things. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at article 250.66, which is basically another chart. It gives us aluminum copper. Now, you're going to size article 250.66 when sizing the ungrounded conductor. Okay? when sizing the conductor so we go through the calculation we find out what it is we find out what our amperage is we go to article 310 15 b 16 we use our 75 degree column we slide down all the way to the bottom 
boom, we get a number, whatever it may be. That's all fine and dandy. Now I need to know what to use. Whatever size conductor I'm using for that amperage, I find it in this chart. Slide over if I'm using copper, I use that number. If I'm using aluminum, I use that number. Take a peek at the code book. It's always important you look at this when we're going through stuff like this because it'll help clarify what we're talking about. Article 250.122, same thing, but how do, we si how do we use that chart? You're gonna take the information from your standard or your optional, cal optional calculation and you're gonna do what? You're gonna take and you're gonna size, you're gonna size the overcurrent protection device. So our main breaker, boom, 250, 20, 122. You wanna size it from the conductors, 250.66. I'm telling you, this is as easy as it can get. My suggestion, when I do exam prep, right in the back of the book, even in the annex, it explains it, but I take you right to the back of the book. We write down step-by-step step what to do. If this has not made it into your code book, you should put it in there now. This is as easy as it gets. I want to size from my ungrounded conductors. Boom, 250.66. I want to size from my main breaker. Boom, 250.122. You can't be intimidated by this stuff. A lot of these questions that are coming through, I mean, granted, they're great questions. And I do get these questions often when I'm teaching classes. But one of the things you guys have to remember is it really is that simple. You just have to do a little bit of research. I hope this video helped. If this video helped, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. Again, this is part two of our frequently asked questions. We're gonna be doing quite a few of these because I am getting quite a few questions. Channel's growing. You know, if this is your first time here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Smash the bell so you can be notified that every Friday I'm gonna give you some type of video, whether it be hands-on or classroom instruction. As always, have a great day and be safe.